Okay, welcome to the number one top 100 indie Vanderpump Rules all time charts podcast. Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze. Last night, Vanderpump Rules season 11, episode 10, Line in the Sand aired on Bravo, along with the after show that can be found on YouTube or Peacock. Peacock also released an uncensored and extended version of the episode, which I love. I love when they do that. This is the first time they've done it for this season, but they were doing it last season, I think only for the reunion. And I'm going to give you updates on what's been going on in social media, as well as all the social media content captured during filming of the latest episode. I want to cover The Valley and Vanderpump Villa, which I watched, but we won't be able to include that in today's review. But if you want us to cover those, please leave a comment so I can justify spending more time doing this for you all. Let's get into it. As always, before I begin, I just want to remind everyone that this is for entertainment purposes only. Be cool. Don't be all like uncool. Just as a reminder, the review of Phaedra Park's Drag Brunch in New York City on March 16th is now available on Patreon. Make sure you subscribe, follow, share, like, comment, leave a five-star rating for Bravo and Blaze with Jenny Blaze. And let's move on to Vanderpump Rules. Like I said, last night we had a new episode of Vanderpump Rules, The Valley, Watch What Happens Live, came back with Brittany Cartwright as a guest. The Vanderpump Rules after show was also on. We have always have a bunch of ancillary podcasts from the cast themselves, plus others. And even Amazon Lives, from Lala usually, but then also social media activity. In addition, the first three episodes of Vanderpump Villa also came out on Hulu. I watched those. I have thoughts, but like I said, it's too much to cover for today. However, I did do a poll and 74% of you in Instagram stories said yes to covering Vanderpump Villa. So if we get enough comments on YouTube and reviews for the podcast, then we can start adding those. It's a lot just to cover this Vanderpump Valley universe. So today I'm going to go through the social media news or highlights so you all know what's going on apart from what we see in the show. I'm also going to give you all the social media content that was posted during filming from the cast if you are a podcast listener, you may want to check out the visuals here on YouTube because some of the social media content is just pictures or video with background music. So to get the full effect, come join us on YouTube. Let's get started with social media activity on So Bad, It's Good with Ryan Bailey. I saw the announcement that Ariana is going to host Love Island. That's like, see, it just keeps getting better and better. This is exactly why I think she should not go back to Vanderpump Rules. But anyways, if you were wondering last week when Brock came over to the group and outed, some would even say slut shamed Katie for sleeping with Max with the group, I could not stop focusing on the guy who was sitting next to Katie because I'm like, who is this guy? I've never seen him on this show but he looks kind of familiar turns out according to about bravo he's on this season below deck which i haven't been reviewing on the show but i've been watching i have thoughts about that too but you know busy 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 <laughs> also on bywig hello drama we see the john mayer versus sheena situation go down and I got a little invested into this over the weekend because first we see Sheena talk about how you know her body was of Wonderland and insinuated that she had like an orgy or threesome with John Mayer and since then there was even like 
people were talking about it even more after the show aired and they were showing like, I think there's like an old magazine where it says that John Mayer was dating Sheena and Sheena kept it. And, you know, like that's very Sheena, right? So when I saw that John Mayer is now, after that episode aired, just like a week ago, he's coming out in public saying that never happened when we know that he used to sleep around with like everyone. It just fell in the moment. I'm like, why the hell would John Mayer do this? That's so grimy. Like it felt like a personal attack towards Sheena. Cause why, why deny it? And why now? Like it just felt really icky. But then I see something else about how maybe Sheena's team released this information to make it look like John Mayer cared, which if that's the case, that's like so bizarre. I don't know why anyone would do that. Either or, it's weird to me. That's my opinion. <laughs> but as I'm going through this like spiral on John Mayer versus Sheena, this LA Times article is brought to my attention and it's gross. I'll put a link in the show notes, but I posted about it in my IG stories. Make sure you're following on Instagram, Bravo and Blaze. Let's move on. We also heard from Lala when she, I don't know, Lala last week was going around talking a lot. And I think she was on Jeff Lewis talking about her new house that she got. I saw on Bravo, Bravo, Bravo Brie that Lala bought a $3.1 million LA mansion. And we knew she bought a place. I didn't know that it was 3.1. Um, I find it interesting that all these numbers are coming out about their houses. I think Ariana bought one for 1.6. Sheena bought one for 2.1, I believe. Lots of houses being bought. Another thing that we saw on social media, Ali released a trailer for her new song called Girls Girl. And the full song is coming out on April 12th. <laughs> So keep an eye out for that. I am so here for Ali Luber as the next Taylor Swift. I said it. On Prez Hilton, we see a post saying that Tom Sandoval gets dragged for recreating the Christina Aguilera iconic Rolling Stone cover. And I just thought that was funny. I could go into this. I post about it on my Instagram, but... It's really funny to me. So I just want to include it. Moving on, Monsters Critic Reality um, posted a clip of Lala on her podcast going through her castmates' Instagram profiles and saying who has bought followers before or who has fake followers. But either way, I thought that this was like, kind of grimy like why is she doing that I didn't like it I saw on pumped up tea that Ariana's brother is celebrating his engagement alongside Sheena Sheena posted this in her stories and it's kind of odd because Ariana's brother Jeremy Maddox has recently spoken out saying that he hasn't really talked to his sister in a while Something weird is going on. I don't know. The Blonde Puerto Rican posted how Katie and Rachel, Katie Maloney and Rachel Levis were both at the iHeart Radio event that happened last week. And I also captured a lot of Katie's stories. She went with Dana. Um, and yeah, they look stunning. <laughs> Oh, 
At that same event, Taste of Reality posted a clip where Rachel was interviewed saying that she would not go back on Vanderpump Rules, that it wasn't ethical, and she would perhaps consider something more ethical. And I just find that to be laughable, like her on this yellow carpet event is not very ethical, in my opinion. On this journey of healing, if somebody were to approach you and ask you to do another reality show, would you do it or would you say like, no, that, that I did not have a good experience, I would not do that? Not if it is anything like Vanderpump Rules. I think there's a way we could create ethical reality TV. And I think if we keep working towards that and seeing what that might look like, maybe in the future I will. Yeah. So Second of all. When email. Second of all. The... Vanderpump Rules season 11 reunion looks were released and I am loving most. You can go see, I kind of put them in order on my carousel on Instagram from most favorite to least favorite. Ariana and Katie just mwah, love it. Love, 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 love. James and Ellie looked good too. Everyone looked good, but I have favorites. So on last week's after show, Lala said she imagines that Tom Sandoval has a needle dick. So I did a poll and 97% agree and think that is true. I felt a duty to <laughs> report back the results. Apparently, I saw on the Real Stone Housewives account that there's a Dancing with the Stone. Wait, hold on. So this is in the U.S. Sun. The headline is Team Ariana, Dancing with the Stars, Gleb Savchenko. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. Okay, Gleb admits VPR Sheena Shea didn't have enough star power to be on show over Ariana Maddox. The pro dancer recalls choreographing for Sheena in the past. Published April 2nd at 3.21 p.m. Eastern. <gasps> this is yesterday. Gleb, 40, noted that he worked with Sheena on her first dance when she tied the knot to her ex-husband, Mike Shea. That doesn't count. That was so long ago. Anyways, I'm going to keep reading. The former couple got married in July 2014 in Santa Susana, California. I choreographed their first dance, and I remember it wasn't easy, Gleb revealed. I'm not saying bad things about her. I think Sheena is amazing. I really like her. She's an awesome girl in everything. But as my memory calls, I didn't think she had a lot of dance experience. That's what I'm trying to say, he continued. Without knowing firsthand what her dance skills are like today, Gleb said that maybe she's improved over the last 10 years and, quote, that much better now. <laughs> Gleb. Who is Gleb? I don't even know who, that's, who this guy is, but he's hilarious. Okay. Let's move on to Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 10, Line in the Sand. The episode description is, Lala hosts a water tasting event to expand her friend's horizons. But the evening quickly devolves into a battle of exes when Schwartz confronts Katie for her recent hookup. Ariana takes Sandoval to task for an irresponsible mishap. James draws a literal line in the sand during a trip to the beach. Tensions boil over when Tom and Ariana clash about long simmering resentments. I have way too many thoughts about this and I'm very biased. If you're new here, I am going to be team Ariana like forever, but for the purposes of today's review, I'm just going to walk through the scenes and, and I'll include the social media content as we go along so that you can kind of get an idea of what else was happening during these scenes. So first we have Lala, Ali, and Katie working out with Jenna Willis. Got the girlies today. Yay! Yay! Give us that bod. Oh, you know it. <laughs> We're gonna. That's it, baby. We got it in. <laughs> so fun. 
Oh, oh damn. Oh, is that how you gonna get it in? She gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. After posting this, give them TT on Twitter. Mention that Jenna Willis may have hooked up with James in season four. I need someone to validate that. Let us know if that's true. Next scene, Anne and Ariana. So Anne comes over. She's wearing a suit. She's got her resume. And she's basically having an interview with Ariana. Anne goes and checks with Tom to make sure everything's cool and, you know, is very transparent with him. Uh, we find out later that Anne is found crying by Ariana because Tom, like, fired her. But it's kind of... It's very unclear on whether she's actually fired or not. He said he told her to take a break. Everyone eventually confronts Tom about it, which I love, but they still let him get away with stuff. It's just so annoying. We see Schwartz visit Sheena and Brock. And my biggest takeaway from this scene is Schwartz talking about wanting a baby. And I can't tell if he's serious or not. Like, are there actually any straight men who are single? who really want to have children. And if they do, would they go as far as just adopting a child on their own or like finding an egg donor in a surrogate and going through the process? Because women do that a lot now. And I don't really see straight or hetero men doing that. Anyways, we see Ariana visit Katie. Ariana goes on to tell Katie about Anne and how Tom was eavesdropping, which is invading Ariana's privacy. And speaking of privacy, Katie mentions how she feels violated because of Sheena tracking her location, tracking Max's location, telling Brock, Brock slut-shaming Katie in front of everyone, which backfired because all it did was make us all cheer for Katie. So good job, Katie, with that BD. But also, I find it interesting that they're talking about this topic of privacy because I said this before in other episodes, but I have never followed filming of a reality show so closely or any show ever like I did with season 11 filming of Vanderpump Rules and people were sending me stuff. I don't think I could, if I saw them in the wild during filming, I don't think I could take secret pictures. That to me feels like paparazzi, which is fine if that's, I, I kind of like seeing paparazzi. <laughs> I, I'm guilty. I like seeing paparazzi pictures, but I don't think I could actually go and take paparazzi pictures. And so I've been torn lately about what I share and everything because it does feel like we are kind of violating their privacy with these like paparazzi type of pictures, right? I don't know. I'm going to show you guys anyway. <laughs> I'm showing you because the ones that I have, they are filming during. So I feel like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we not show them or should we show them? You guys want to see them. I know you do. Anyways, Ariana pointed out that she never had Tom's location. Suspect. Second of all. When email. Second of all. I did a poll asking you all, do you share your, your location with your friends? 89% said no. And I went to go visit my friend in Queens this past weekend, which I should do a whole review on that adventure because we had a tarot card reader. I, when I was shuffling, a card came out and it was the devil. And her reading, I couldn't tell. I was like, is the devil representative of Tom Sam? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Anyways, I purposely shared my location because I'm like, oh, I can just, this is good if, in case anything happens, at least she'll know where I am for safety purposes. 
And I only did it till the end of the day. So when you share your location, you can choose how long you share it with them. So why are there 56 people who are like, yes, Sheena, look at my location for the rest of my life indefinitely. I shared for the rest of the day. You could do that. So I don't get it. Anyways, let's move on to the water tasting, the water man. I like this guy. And I'm kind of into this water connoisseur being a water snob kind of thing. Because I do, I'm not that picky, but sometimes I do feel like some water is gross. And I know people who are worse than me, so it makes me feel a little bit better. But like, I would like to know a little bit more. Also, close by me, we have Saratoga Springs, which is like natural spring water. And there's supposed to be all these health benefits and not just like for drinking, but like your skin and I'm into that stuff. So I want to, I want it all. Oh my God. Imagine if you took a bath in that all, only cuvee <laughs> water. That's bougie. That's, that's like some JLo shit. <laughs> JLo, what? JLo brushes her teeth with cuvee water bottled cuvee. Am I saying it wrong? Whatever. Okay. So love this guy. And we got some social media content. Like champagne. Yeah. Oh, so I hopefully can't the wait. neighbors will be fine. Let's yeah, yeah, pop it, baby. Yeah. It's it's like Increasingly. Me to order Increasingly. Now Mrs. Body All right. Just wait then. Oh. Okay. Let's do this. Huh? Yeah. Pop it. Woo! Oh, I did a poll. Asking if you guys are water snobs. 61% said no to being a water snob, but that's still a lot of people saying yes. So even though you're not the majority, just know there are a good amount of you out there. So don't be ashamed. Live your truth. At this water tasting event, Tom Sandoval is doing the most per usual. At this water tasting event, we see Katie and Schwartz have a little talk. And I'm not going to go through every line by line, but Katie is not in the wrong. Schwartz is trying to spin it. He's Schwartzing right now. He looks like an elf. I have nothing else to say except that I hope Katie bangs all of Schwartz's friends. Consider them all banged. Do it, Katie. Peg them. Peg a queen. We also see Ariana versus Sandoval as she's describing what happened with Anne. She refers to Tom Sandoval as the attempted dog murderer. Well, the attempted dog murderer was eavesdropping. Oh, there's so many things. I don't want to turn this whole review into all the reasons Tom Sandoval makes no sense and has serious issues, but I could not stand it when he brings up the cat litter box, when they're talking about something totally different, there are two unrelated events, but he throws in the cat litter when they're talking about Maya. I hate that. I hate that. Second of all. Who email? Second of all. Second of all. Who email? Second of all. He's the one who brought up her getting everything. But he specifically said, the campaigns. And now my assistant, oh, he is so salty over the campaigns. I love it. That was a pretty, that water tasting was big event in our world. So we see Shayna and Brock together and they're talking about getting a nanny, blah, blah, blah. What I took away from this was Sheena saying that she wanted to uninvite Sandoval to beach day because of what happened at the water tasting event and Brock talked her out of it. So that is important because I have a blind item 
that came out after Beach Day. So just hold tight. But remember this. We see a scene with Ariana and her interior designer. They're itemizing all of the furniture. And turns out Ariana bought most of the furniture. Good for her. Even if she doesn't take it, it's good to itemize it and have like the actual amount that was paid for it. Just so you have like, that's, that could be huge. That could be part of like the settlement of the house. If he really wants to keep it, he should have accounted for that too and put it in there and been like, look, I will account for this too. If he really wanted her out, everyone's like, oh, she could leave. She could leave. She said she had $2,000 to her name when Scandal happened. That's all she has is her house and furniture. God, people are so insensitive. Granted, like for me personally, I probably would have been like, I'll figure it out later. But still, like not everyone's the same. Like chill out. So we get to beach day. We have a lot of beach day activity on social media. Beach day. Everything else. Thanks, honey. Shots fired right now. Ali, Ali is searching. Look at it. This is where we have the paparazzi pics when they're filming. Brock is so messy. He brings up Raquel. And that sparks Ariana and Sandoval fighting again. They start fighting over pet ownership. I just, I can't with him. He's awful at, you can't argue with him because he doesn't have any productive argumentative skills. It's all deflection and just completely off topic things that he brings in. It's so annoying. I hate that. I'm so glad that Ariana is sticking up for herself. I'm glad he left. Lala shows up. She's like, oh, what's happening? And Ariana goes off and she's like, nobody is holding him accountable and it's gross. And they left it to be continued. But I think there's going to be more from this same day on the next episode. I'm not sure if I should release all the behind the scenes yet. I already posted the blind item from after Beach Day, okay? And what I said about Sheena wanting to uninvite Sandoval is important here because this blind item says, one of the guys just came back from the bathroom absolutely hammered. Sandoval is here. Sheena and Lala are consoling Ariana right now, and Ariana is on and off crying. And she keeps saying, he shouldn't be here. And production stepped in to calm her down. And my sister went to the bathroom. <laughs> There's a lot of ants. And saw Tom Sandoval flirting with a girl at the bar. And now about four new cameras came in. So we think they're setting up for a scene where they see each other. The girls are saying to Ariana, they know the girl who had the affair, Rachel, question mark, was sleeping with more than just Tom. No, so now they're getting up for a new scene and Ariana goes, can they keep our nachos here? A queen. 
boots on the ground. I love it. All right, we're going to on to the after show. So they talked a lot about Anne on the after show. And I find this to be interesting because there is a very strange, peculiar relationship going on between Anne and Tom. I guess Tom eventually fired Anne. Anne started a podcast called I Signed an NDA. Tom says Anne is going to get a letter from his lawyer because she was talking about Tom saying things that aren't true. Tom feels that Anne going to Ariana and Katie was a betrayal to Sandoval. I need to know this guy's barometer on what things are considered to be betrayals because what he done to everyone, including us, <laughs> the viewers, he's betrayed all of us. What well, he's harping on Anne talking to Katie and Ariana. Oh my God. I can't with him. And then he's like, I don't know about you guys, but if somebody called me something awful that I wouldn't want to be said about me, I sure as hell would not be repeating it over and over on an after show. Tom Sandoval's like, she's calling me an animal murderer. So I did a poll because... Within a week of Scandival last year in 2023, I was so caught up in thinking like what I was finding out real time, I truly felt shook to my core and was like, is he worse than Scott Peterson? Like, this is crazy. And then he starts calling himself a serial killer at the reunion to Lisa. He said, I'm not a serial killer. Okay, so that was one time he said it. Then we hear him say, people are comparing me to Scott Peterson. And he just kept saying it over and over again. Ariana says he's an attempted dog murderer. And then he repeats it in the after show. And I just, uh, I just wanted to do a pulse check and see, do you all think that he's worse than Scott Peterson? It was pretty close, actually. 47% said yes. We're being facetious. Obviously, he didn't murder anyone, but the dogs? I had a whole theory about Charlotte. I'm not even going to get into that because that'll just incite anger. But also in the after show, they talk about Katie banging Max a lot. And I just love how James Kennedy is so... Bout about it. He's so down with it. Huge fan of Katie's. He's like, epic, savage. Nobody walks around saying, yeah, I slept with that person for revenge. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, and obviously in this episode, we see Ariana is very angry. This is like the first time all season and I think she's kept her composure pretty well, considering. So it's the first time she actually goes off and they let her. And they're like, you know, I just feel really bad for her. She really should let it go for herself. And I love how they cut to Ariana in the after show. And she's like, whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Legend. I love it. Oh my gosh. So after the episode airs, I freaking love, I love it. Jax Taylor is active. <laughs> He's so funny. He tweets, how do you know when Vanderpump has literally hit a dead end and have nothing to talk about anymore? Dot, dot, dot. They have a water tasting. Dot, dot. What the actual fuck? <laughs> He's so but wait, it gets better. Then Vanderpump Rules Party. Oh my God, so funny. At Jax's bar in Studio City, he's got a microphone. He's sitting down watching and he's go <laughs> He's saying this is scripted. It's scripted. 
sorry but i love this Jax taylor i love when he's unhinged and like he's not really he's not hurting anyone directly right here so it feels like it's kind of harmless i like harmless unhinged Jax taylor <laughs> and i think that's what we're seeing love it speaking of Jax taylor the valley I can't go into a whole recap or review, but I miss Kristen Doty. I like Kristen Doty. I want to continue watching Kristen Doty. The reason why she is not on Vanderpump Rules anymore is because of something she did that was considered to show signs of racist behavior. So, for the Valley season one, episode three, it feels pretty bold of Kristen to be making the statements that she has made in this last episode towards another cast member. Like, glass houses, glass houses. And I mean, what do you expect? It came up, but this show is messy as hell. We still got to watch it. We have to watch it because Jesse and his wife, they had therapy last night and it was heartbreaking. Like they definitely should not be together. The Jackson Brittany split is a little different and more mysterious. I feel like we have more pieces to the puzzle we need to put together. So I highly recommend Vanderpump Villa came out. The first three episodes are out on Hulu. And I will say that it's giving below deck meets early Vanderpump rules. But with, obviously we're starting like 12 years later than Vanderpump rules. So it feels like there may be a little bit of acting going on and a little bit of trying too hard, but we will see, because I'm gonna stay tuned, leave a comment so I can review both of these shows in more detail, and make sure you subscribe, follow, share, like, leave a comment, and a five-star rating for Bravo and Blaze on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to follow on social media at Bravo and Blaze, because I post almost everything related to what I'm discussing on the show over there, especially Instagram. Until next week, stay lit, y'all.